tell me to read. If they be obedient and doing all the blessings that was going before all them. But then he turned around and said, but if they disobey me, these are the curses that are going to come upon you. And it culminates with Israel going into captivity. Deuteronomy 28. And pick it up at verse number 36. You go ahead when you get there. The Lord shall bring thee, and thy king which thou shalt set over thee, uh -huh. to a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and there thou shalt serve other gods, wood and stone. So he's setting them no. You no longer go possess the promised land. The Lord kicked them out of the promised land. He said, and no, the Lord is going to bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and there you're gonna serve other gods, gods of wood and stone. And do what? And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations whither the Lord shall lead thee. Again, Israel was to go into captivity. Drop down to verse number 41. Go ahead. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters. And what? But thou shalt not enjoy them. Because what's going to happen with them? But they shall go into captivity. Drop down to verse number 45. It always culminates with his people going into captivity. He's going to tell us something. Go ahead. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee. And this is a curse from the Lord. Go ahead. And shall pursue thee. And what? And overtake thee till thou be destroyed. He said all these curses are going to come upon thee. They're going to pursue you and overtake you till you be destroyed as a people. Why? Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And this is why we've been destroyed as a people. Go ahead. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. This is the condition that you're going to find God's chosen people in. And if you find a people that fits this condition, then you found Israel. And there's only one people that fit this. Only one. I don't care who will lay claim to being God's chosen people. The sign will tell you who God's chosen people truly is. What was the befall then? Were they not to go into captivity? Were they not to be scattered into slavery all over this world? There's only one people that happened to. Only one. Drop down to verse number 64 and go ahead. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. From where? From the one end of the earth even unto the other. Again, always culminates with them going into slavery. And he said he's going to scatter thee among all people. From one end of the earth even to the other. And you can look at us as a people and you will find us everywhere, will you not? But how did we get there? We didn't migrate nowhere. We were taken into slavery all over this world. Our forefathers. And we remained in slavery. Go ahead and what were we going to do when we got there? And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. God's priests, those who were commissioned to teach the others about the true and living God, don't know anything about God, and they are following these other people gods. That is our problem. Yes. It's not a political problem. It's not an economic problem. Our problem is with our God. And we can't figure that out. We didn't march. We didn't set in. We didn't boycott. It. We didn't do some of everything. And what do we end up? On the bottom. Never gonna get, never gonna move from that position until we figure it out and turn to our God and start serving him according to what is written in the book. But go ahead, verse number 68, because he keeps talking about a people going into captivity. How are they going to be sent into captivity? Go ahead. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. And again, Egypt just represents bondage. It just represents slavery. 
But he's not talking about physically bringing them into Egypt. He's talking about sending them into slavery. And how are they going to go? He said the Lord's going to bring me into Egypt again with ships. Again, there's only one people that was transported into slavery all over this world. In the halls of ships. That's why I say this parable is about us. Not another. This is telling us how we got in the condition that we are in, and more importantly, why we remain there. As I say, you can't look to no politician. Your plight is not the result of somebody being superior to you. We were not oppressed as a people because our captives were so mighty and powerful. It was done because God allowed it to take place as punishment for us refusing to obey him. And we continue the affliction. He said, the Lord is going to bring you into Egypt again with ships by way whereof I spake unto thee. Go ahead. Thou shalt see it no more again. And what? There ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. This is the Holocaust. This is the real Holocaust. Yes. To have a people enslaved all over the world. And that's not the end of it. Turn to Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter. What else was supposed to take place with this people? Deuteronomy 32. Because he's going to tell us what else is going to befall this people because of their refusal to obey their God. <coughs> Deuteronomy 32 and verse number. 26, 32 and 26. What the Lord say he's going to do? Go ahead. I said I would scatter them into corners. And the Lord has done this. The Lord is the one that sent our forefathers into slavery. He said, I, must, I said I'm going to scatter them into corners. And what else is he going to do? I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. We don't know who we are. And nobody else. There's only one people that if you ask them, where did you come from? If you ask a person where they came from that's of European descent, do they say, I'm from Europe? No, they'll tell you. I'm from Great Britain, or I'm from Germany. I'm from Finland, I'm from Sweden. Or if you, you see somebody from Africa, where you, yeah, I'm Kenyan. I'm from Nairobi, Ethiopia. But ask us. Where you come from? I'm from, I'm from Mississippi. I'm from Alabama. I, I, my people came from Arkansas. Okay, I understand that those are states. But what is the land of your origin? Now they've gotten wiser. And then they say, well, I'm from, I'm from Africa. That's a continent. Where are you from? How come you don't know? Because you have no remembrance. This is Israel. This is the curse that was placed on us as a people by our God. And it was going to be upon us as a sign and a wonder. But this is how you know who you are. God's a merciful God. He sent us into captivity. But then, we put our history, had our captives to write down our history. So that when we started to awake spiritually, we would find out who we are. I always say, this is our story. Not to cast dispersions or to say that God is a respecter of person. But to say if God is going to restore us as a people, we have to come into understanding as to who we are, how we got here, and what it is that we need to do to get up out of this valley. Turn over. I'm sorry, pick it up at verse number 27. Thank you. Well, now that I fear the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely. What? Unless they should say, our hand is high and the Lord hath not done all this. Again, what happened to us was not due to the power and the might of our captives. It's not because they're superior in any kind of way. What happened to us was because of our own stupidity. 
our own belligerence, our own ignorance, our own lack of understanding. God showed himself unto our forefathers, gave our forefathers his word, his laws, his statutes, his commandments. He showed them how to serve the true and living God, and that is what we were commissioned to do as a people. Not just to teach, but to show the rest of the sons of Adam how to serve God. And we failed that miserably. And he's punished us with righteous indignation. As he said in Amos, of all the families of the earth, only you have I know. I'm going to punish you for all your iniquity. Because we look at others and say, man, look at the wickedness in those people. Not understanding the true wickedness lies in us. We taught the wicked their ways. Because if we had done what we were supposed to, the world wouldn't be in the condition that it is in. But go ahead. What did he say about us as a people? For they are a nation void of counsel. And what? Neither is there any understanding in them. Turn over to Proverbs. Won't hear. Refuse to obey. Have no knowledge. Have no understanding. Proverbs 21. That's why we were destroyed as a people. And here's Solomon. Reiterates why it's so important for you to have not. Why it's so important for you to have understand. 21 and verse 16. One verse. Read that for me. 21 and 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the day. And that's where we remain. Because we have no understanding as a people. We are the dry bones of the valley. We are spiritually dead people. Turn to Romans. The 10th chapter. And we remain that way despite all of the churches that are in our community. Every corner and two or three in between. And yet and still, with all of this worship, God truly is not listening to us. Certainly he's not overturned our right. He's not heard us. You would think that one would sit back and consider, oh, the, the ministers are getting rich, filthy rich, but the people, they're not being fed. They're not benefiting in any kind of way. But they may come home and say, oh, I was inspired today by what the pastor had to say. What did he teach you? I, I don't know what he, I don't know, but I felt good. I'm not making fun out of nobody, but it's shameful. It's sad. We're in this state because we refuse to awaken. We refuse to understand what it is that we see with our very own eyes. The despair, the poverty that exists within our community, all the dysfunction that exists there, again, is because of our problem that we have with our God. And until we reconcile that, it's not going to change. But I thank God the Lord has shown me it's going to come a day when we are going to come about this battle. It's going to come a day when we will be awakened as a people. And even though we may try to share this word with people here and there, and they refuse to hear. They shun you. They look at you, some of them with disdain. They look at you, don't want to be around you. You know that one day you are going to go back to the promised land. One day we're going to wake up as a people. And why do I say that? Because God himself, the same one that told us that we was going to be scattered into slavery, is the same one that said, I'm going to open up their, their, their graves. I'm going to redeem them from their grave. I'm going to ransom them from the dead. The Lord is going to do that. But for now, we remain among the dead. Spiritually dead, and Paul tells us why. Here Paul is talking about Israel during his day. And this applies to us right now. Go ahead. Brethren, 
My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. So he's expressing his will that the Lord save his people. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. But what? But not according to nothing. He's letting us know what the problem is. He said, I bear them record. They got a love for God, but then again, it's not according to knowledge. See, you can love God all you want, but if you don't love him in, in accordance to his word, then all that love means absolutely nothing. To profess your love for God and refuse to obey him just makes all of your so-called love null and void. He said, I bear him record. They got a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Do we not have a zeal of God as a people? We consider ourselves to be truly a spiritual people, or we can sing and dance with the best of them. As I say, does not matter where you go. You're going to find in our communities, liquor stores, some beauty shops, and churches. Churches all over the place. But where is God? Nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. And why is that? What are they doing? Verse number three. For they're being ignorant of God's righteousness. Having no understanding what is right in the eyes of God. He said they're being ignorant of God's righteousness and have done what? And going about to establish their own righteousness. They've sanctified themselves, but not according to God's word. They're righteous in their own eyes. He said, but they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have done what? Have not submitted themselves into the righteousness of God. Again, what Paul was saying about Israel then applies to Israel even until this day. We refuse to accept what thus said the Lord. Who has the authority? <coughs> not God. It is what man has said. 99.9% .9 of what people do in their worship of God cannot be found nowhere in his word. Nowhere whatsoever. During the days of Paul, Israel did not want to accept Jesus as the Messiah. They still wanted to rely on the sacrificing of animals for their deliverance. But today, Oh, we claim Jesus as our Savior, but we don't want to do his commandments. So there's no difference. Everybody's established their own, again, their own form of righteousness. If they talk about being obedient, they'll say, well, see, we don't drink. We don't go to the club. We don't do those things. And some of them just get real absurd. We don't wear makeup. We don't allow... Women, I ain't gonna even go there. These people have no understanding when it comes to the Word of God. None whatsoever. But the sanctification of oneself by their own righteousness will not lead to salvation. I don't care how much someone claims to be saved. Even Jesus himself said, He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Ain't nobody saved. Ain't nobody got salvation. At best, you're on a road trying to obtain salvation. We rejected God. Turn over to Isaiah, 65th chapter. <clears throat> Even though people don't want to obey God, they want to claim to be righteous. And we're going to see what, how does the Lord feel about that. Isaiah 65 and 1. Again, this is talking about Israel, but it applies to all. Because all are following suit. 65 and 1. Go ahead when you get there. I am sought of them that ask not for me. Uh -huh. I am found of them that sought me not. Talking about the other nations that are seeking the Lord. He said, I'm sought of them that ask not for me. He said, I'm found of them that sought me not. Go ahead. I said, behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. Talking about the Gentiles. But what about his own people? What about Israel? I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people. That's Israel. And what is it that we want to do? Which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. Again, in a way that seemeth right. 
is to say, though, there's a way to seem right unto men that lead them unto death. He said, I've spread out my hands all the day into a rebellious people, a stiff neck, hard-headed people, which walked in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. <coughs> Go ahead. A people that provoked me to anger continually to my face. Go ahead. That sacrificeth in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick. That continued to worship these false gods. Go ahead. Which remain among the graves. Again, because we are the dry bones in the valley. He said they remain among the graves. And do what? Lodge in the monuments. Spiritually dead. We have all these large edifices in our communities that they call churches. And God cannot be found nowhere in there. Period. Because they are not doing what thus say the Lord. It's that simple. It's not complicated. It's not rocket science. It does not take a biblical scholar to understand the fundamental principle that God has showed man from the very beginning, beginning when Adam in the book of Genesis is what? Obey me or you're going to die. It's real simple. And God is not a respecter of person. If Adam died because he sinned against God, then how can God turn around and allow others to get away with sin. And sin is the transgression of the law. You cannot circumvent your responsibilities to serve God. I don't care whatever, whatever doctrine one comes up with. You have to be obedient unto the Lord. He said they remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments. Doing what? Which eats swine's flesh. And the path of abominable things is in their vessels. And is that not our mainstay in our diet? Some pork? Mm -hmm. Don't keep the dietary law whatsoever. But then what will they say? Which saying, stand by thyself. Because they think they know God. Go ahead. Come not near to me. They will tell you, I don't want to hear what it is that you're saying. He said, which say to yourself. Would say, stand by, thy, by thyself, come not nearer to me. And why is that? For I am holier than thou. How can that be? How can you be holy? Didn't the Lord say, swine is an abomination unto me. Mm -hmm. But yet and still, they'll do abominable things. And then will say, I'm holier than thou. Go ahead. And what makes them holy? It's because they've been sanctified. Not by God, but by their own sense of righteousness. What did the Lord say? These are a smoke in my nose. Or what? A fire that burneth all the day. So these people are an irritant unto me. And we've seen what took place when God got angry with his people. Turn to Isaiah, the 42nd chapter. And I say, we are a spiritually blind people, and the Lord showed us here. It don't get any worse than this. This is the Lord talking about his people. Here's read. 42, and pick it up at verse number 18. What is he telling us? Go ahead. Hear ye deaf, uh -huh. and look ye blind. We are spiritually deaf and blind. And he's trying to get us to awaken. He say, hear ye deaf, and look you blind, that you may see. Verse number 19, who is he talking about? Who is blind but my servant? Or uh -huh. deaf as my messenger that I sent. Because again, we were supposed to teach the rest of the sons of Adam about the true and living God. And he said, but who's as blind as my people? Or as deaf as my messenger that I sent? Because he has not heard nothing that God has said. Go ahead. Who is blind as he that is perfect? And blind as the Lord's servant. Go ahead. Seeing many things, but thou observest not. Don't understand what it is we're looking at. Go ahead. Opening the ears, but he heareth. We got ears, but we can't hear. We see, but have no sight. Because we don't see spiritually. We don't hear spiritually. Go ahead. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. Uh-huh. He will magnify the law. And do what? Make it honorable. The law has not been done away with even Paul. Who they used Paul's writing to try and do away with the law. What did Paul say concerning the law? Did he not say the law is holy, just, and good? The law can never be done away with. Go ahead. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in homes. Where do we reside? 
And they are hid in prison houses. He said, this is the people that have been robbed and plundered, and they are hid in prison houses. We make up roughly 13% of the population. But yet we make up over 50% of every form of incarceration in this country. He said, this is the people that have been robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. Go ahead. They are for a prey and none delivereth, for a spoil and none saith restore. Ain't gonna be no restitution. Ain't gonna be no, no payback. That's what we look for as a people. It ain't coming. It ain't gonna happen. Go ahead. Verse number 23. Who among you will give ear to this? Uh -huh. Who will be hearken and hear for the time to and come? And what is it that we need to understand? Go ahead. Who gave Jacob for his spoil and Israel to the rock? Who did? Did not the Lord? And that's what he wants us to understand. We offended him. He is the one that has done this unto us. He said, who gave Jacob for his spoil and Israel to the rock? Did not the Lord? We don't even consider our situation. You would think with all these churches, somebody would say, well, there's got to be a problem here. All this praying, all this praising, all this singing and dancing, and our situation has not changed whatsoever. So I wonder why young people make a mockery of so-called worship. Because they look at those that went before them, it has the benefit of the prophet them one bit. That's why they concern themselves with it. Our children are lost because we as a people are lost. The so-called dream we fed them was nothing but a nightmare. Get an education. Equip yourself and you will advance in life. Not so. There's nothing wrong with having an education. Nothing wrong. What one needs to be educated in is the Word of God. Right. It begins with knowing how to serve God. Then all the rest will take care of itself. But go ahead. He against whom we have sinned. When they were not walking his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. Because of our transgressions, what has the Lord done unto us? Therefore he hath poured upon him the, the fury of his anger and the strength of battle. Go ahead. And it hath set him on fire round about. And what? Yet he knew not, and it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart. How dead can you be? You walking around on fire and don't even know it. That's an impossibility, is it not? Now with us as a people. We spiritually dead. The Lord has done this unto us. Set us ablaze. And we don't have any sense. Don't smell the singeing of our clothes. Don't, don't can't feel the heat. Walking around dead. Spiritually dead. But turn over to Luke, the 21st chapter. Because the Lord lets us know this ain't always going to be our condition. Now go to, go to Luke for me. Because it's not Israel in captivity. Mm -hmm. Jesus is going to tell us it's not always going to be that way. Luke 21 and verse number 20. Luke 21 and 20. Because you can read... They had been asking Jesus about, they had been talking to Jesus about the temple, how it was, had been adorned. And he had told them it was going to come to pass and there was not going to be one stone left upon another. And he's going to let them know when that was going to take place. 21 and verse number 20. Read that for me. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassion armies. Go ahead. And know that the desolation thereof is not. He said, when you see this take place, know that the destruction that has been foretold of is getting ready to occur. Verse 23, go ahead. 23. Verse 23. But woe unto them that are with the child, uh -huh. and them that give suck in those days. Why? There shall be great distress in the land, 
and wrath upon this people. Talking about what was going to take place with Israel. Go ahead, verse number 24. What was going to happen with them? And they shall fall by the edge of the swamp. And do and what? And shall be led away captive into all nations. Again, he's confirmed Israel's going to be in captivity. Is he not? This is Jesus himself. But he tells us something here. Go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. Forever. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So there's a time for our captivity to come to an end. He said, oh, but we're going to be in captivity until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Gentiles are what's known as European, and it is their time. They run this world, and they are going to run it until the second coming of the Lord. And Israel is going to be in captivity until their time of reign is over. Turn over Hosea, the 13th chapter. Because as I say, despite our condition, there is reason for hope. Because as he said in Ezekiel, he was going to open up our graves, did he not? The Lord is going to redeem us. 13, and verse, I'm sorry, Hosea 13, yes, 13 and 9. Thank you, go ahead. 13 and 9. O Israel, what? thou hast destroyed thyself. Again, because we sin against God, that is what brought about the condition that we're in. Our forefathers sinned and was sending the slavery all over this world. And we furthered the affliction. And the Lord has said, O oh Israel, you destroyed yourself. But what? But in me is thine help. That's the one that we should place our trust and faith in. Right. That's the one who's going to deliver us. None other than our God. Drop down to verse number 14. And what is he going to do? I will, ran ahead. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. Go ahead. I will redeem them from death. Go ahead. Oh, death, I will be thy plague. And he's talking about the physical death as well as the spiritual death. He said, I'm going to ransom them from the power of the grave. He said, I'm going to redeem them from death. He said, oh, death, what? Oh, death, I will be thy plague. Uh -huh. Oh, grave, I will be thy destruction. Go ahead. Repentance shall be hidden from my eyes. Turn over to Psalms, the 33rd. 33rd Psalm. Because then the Lord asked Ezekiel, he said, can these bones live, Ezekiel? Ezekiel said, thou knowest, Lord. And what does he say? You prophesied to these bones, Ezekiel. He said he was going to breathe his breath into them and they was going to live, did he not? He was going to put his spirit in them, and they was going to live. And we're going to see what it is that the Lord is going to put within this dead people that's going to cause them to have life. Here, David is telling us what the, Lord of, what the word of the Lord is referred to. One of the things that it's referred to. 33 and verse number 6. Because we're going to see this is the breath that's going to have to be breathed into Israel. Bring them back to life. 33 and 6. Go ahead. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. Go ahead. And all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He said, Now, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made. He just spoke the word and they were brought into existence. He says, And all the host of them by what? He said, By the breath of his mouth. So he's referring to the Lord's word as being breath. And he is going to put his word into his people. Yes. And they are going to live. That's what Jesus is telling us here. Turn over to John, the fifth chapter. Because the Lord told Ezekiel, you prophesied to these dry bones and tell them to hear the words of the Lord. And if you do that, he said, then you're going to live. And Jesus is going to tell us that's what's going to happen to he spiritually dead people here. John 5 and verse number 25. 5 and 25. Read one verse. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. He said, truly, truly, I'm telling you. He said, the hour is coming and now is. He said, when the dead, talking about the spiritually dead, are going to hear the voice of the Son of God. And what's going to happen? He said, and they that hear shall live. Those that hear and are obedient unto the word of God 
they're going to live. They're going to be, Israel is going to be awakened from this spiritual death. God's word is going to be delivered unto them, and they are going to listen to it. They're going to hear it. More importantly, they're going to hearken to it. The Lord is going to bring his people back. It's just a matter of time. As I say, we are stiff-necked, hard-headed people. But we've been beat down so bad. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a, a woman that had a good man, a real good man. And she went out on him and, and, and went behind his back and cheated on him and everything else. And then left him for what she thought was the grass that was green on the other side. And then she got out there and was abused and misused. But the man that she left never stopped loving her. Never stopped loving her. And he was just sitting there waiting. And when she got through going through all of her turmoil, all of her drama, she found her way back to that man. Do you know what? When she goes back to him, she'll have no, he'll never have another problem with her. The Lord ain't gonna never have another problem with us as a people. What he's put us through as a people, when he opens us, open up our eyes as a nation, and we turn to him, he's never, ever going to have another problem with us as a people. Guaranteed. And why is that? Because of the whooping that he didn't put on us now. So when we hear the voice of the Lord, and not just hear, but we obey it, he say, you're going to live. Turn over. To John, the sixth chapter. Because he said he was going to breathe his breath into him, but he also was going to put his spirit into him. And they're going to live. And we want to find out what he actually meant by that. Turn over to John 6. And verse number 54. Because Jesus is going to tell us here about the power of God's word. 6 and 54. You go ahead when you get there. And so eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. Uh-huh. And I will raise him up at the last day. And Jesus here is not talking physically. He's simply talking about you got to come up under the blood of Christ. He say, whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, they're going to inherit eternal life. He said, and I'll raise him up at the last day. Drop down to verse number 60 and go ahead. No. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, what? This is a hard saying, who can hear? Drop down to verse number 63, because the Lord is a merciful God. And if you don't understand something, if you ask him, he'll, he'll, he'll tell you what it is. So when Jesus had told them about the eating of his flesh and the drinking of his blood, he said, Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear this? Who can understand this? And Jesus is going to tell them what it is that he's talking about. 63. Go ahead. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth enough. He said, look, it's the spirit that gives life. He said, eating on my flesh is not going to profit you. He said, it is the spirit that quickeneth. That's what gives life. And what does he refer to that spirit as being? Go ahead. The words that I speak unto you. Uh -huh. They are spirits and they are mine. And the spirit that God is going to put in us is his word. But that's too simplified to think. What to say? Well, I just need God's word. People will tell you. You got people that can quote this Bible backwards and forwards. They know the word of God in the sense of being able to quote it. But to truly have God's spirit in you, turn over to Isaiah 11 chapter. We're going to see what that means. To really have God's word in you, or his spirit, we're going to find out what that is. Because Jesus is our example, and he was full of the spirit. And Isaiah tells us here what it is that Jesus had been filled with. Isaiah 11, verse number 1. You go ahead when you get there. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, uh -huh. and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And this is talking about none other than Jesus, because he was the offspring of David, and David's father was Jesse. He said, there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, 
and the branches go grow forth out of his root. What's going to take place? Go ahead. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Now these are all God's spirits. He said the spirit of the Lord is going to rest upon him. And when you say rest upon him, it's the same as being in him, resting on him. He has God's spirit. He said the spirit of the Lord is going to rest upon him. And what spirit is that? The spirit of wisdom and understanding. Uh-huh. The spirit of counsel and might. Go ahead. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And that's what comes from God's word. It is his knowledge, his understanding, his wisdom. That is what it is that one must acquire with the word of God. It's not enough just to hear the word. Israel heard the word. They heard the word from none other than God himself. Did he not descend upon Mount Sinai and deliver unto them the Ten Commandments? They heard God's word. They saw the true and living God. But as he said, they had no knowledge. Therefore, my people were destroyed. They were sent into captivity. To have God's word in you is to have his spirit, to have his knowledge, his wisdom, his understanding. Turn over to Ezekiel, the 36th chapter. We're going to see what's going to happen to Israel. Because <clears throat> again, the Lord said he was going to put his spirit into these dry bones. And they was going to live. Ezekiel 36. And pick it up at verse number 16. Ezekiel 36 and 16. Go ahead when you get there. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man. When the house of Israel dwelt in their own land. What did they do? They defiled it by their own way and by their doing. Go ahead. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. When Israel was brought into the promised land, they served God according to their own righteousness. They did what it is that they wanted to do. They transgressed against God's commandments, worshiping other false gods. And Therefore, what did he do? Verse 18. Wherefore well, I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land. Uh -huh. And for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. And did what? And I scattered them among the heathen. Go ahead. They were dispersed through the countries. He said, I sent them in a slave. He said, I scattered them among the heathens and they were dispersed throughout the through, they were dispersed through the countries. Scattered into slavery from one end of this earth to the other. Go ahead. According to their way and according to their doings, I judged them. The Lord did this. He sent Israel into captivity. Pick it up at verse number 22 and go ahead. Therefore say unto the house of Israel. You tell them. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord God. What? I do not this for your sakes. But why is the Lord going to be merciful unto us? Go ahead. O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake. Uh-huh. Which ye have profaned among the heathen whither ye went. Go ahead. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. Go ahead. And he that shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God. When? When I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. Because what is the Lord going to do? For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries. Because Israel, again, is all over the world. Scattered into, have been scattered into slavery, in captivity, and being politically correct, today we will say, well, how can you say you are a slave? If your forefathers were brought here as a slave and you still remain here, you're still a slave. You may not have the physical chains, but the spiritual chains still entangle you. You're still a slave. He said, I'm going to take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all the countries and will bring you into your own land. This is future. What is he going to do? Verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. Talking about his word. Go ahead. And ye shall be clean from all your filthiness. And from all your idols will I cleanse you. And a what? A new heart also will I give you. Go ahead. And a new spirit will I put within you. Because the spirit that he's going to give you is of his spirit. He's going to give you a new mindset. He said, and a new heart or a new mindset also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. 
He tells you in another place in Isaiah, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. So what you have to do is you got to replace your thoughts with God's thoughts and then your ways will become like his ways. As he says, can two walk together except they be agreed? You have to take on God's mindset. As Paul said in Philippians, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. As he was obedient even unto death. We have to submit our will to that of God. We got to be willing to obey him in according to his word. And if you do that, that's going to bring about a new mindset, a new way of how you think, a new way of how you act and behave. He said, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. Go ahead. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. Go ahead. And I will put my spirit within you. And what's going to happen? Cause you to walk in my statutes. Because you're going to be obedient. If you got God's spirit, if his word is in you, if His spirit, if you feel with his spirit, then you're going to be obedient to him. He said, I'm going to put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, to be obedient. And you're going to do what? And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Go ahead. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. Once the Lord brings us back to the promised land, he said, and you're going to dwell in the land that I gave unto your fathers and do what? And ye shall be my people. Uh -huh. I will be your God. Never to be cast away again. He said, I'm a, you're going to dwell in the land that I gave your fathers, and you're going to be my people, and I'm going to be your God. Turn over to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Because again, Paul's going to reiterate, he's speaking to the Ephesians. In order to have God's spirit, that means you have to have a new mindset. Ephesians 4, and verse number 17. 4 and 17, you go ahead when you get there. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord. What? That ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. He said, look here. Once you come under the blood of Christ, once you accept him as your Lord and Savior, you are supposed to repent and turn from your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus. And you were supposed to come out of that baptism once you be submerged in the water, you're baptized, that old you, that old man, remains down in that water and you were supposed to come up a new creature in Christ. He said, this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the futility of their minds. Having what? Having the understanding dark, uh -huh. being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. He said, look, you can't be like them. You can't do as they do. They do the things that are contrary to God because of their ignorance. You're supposed to be enlightened. You're supposed to have understanding. Go ahead. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness. Uh-huh. To work all uncleanness with greediness. But what? But ye have not so learned Christ. Uh-huh. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Once you come to the Lord, you're to understand that there are things that you're supposed to do. You have to be obedient unto his word. You have to obey his commandments according to what is written in this book, in this Bible. He said, you've not so learned Christ. If so be that you've heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you what? That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. That old way of behaving, that old Conduct. He said that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is what? Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. Corrupt in his thinking, corrupt in his desires of things that are contrary unto God. Once you come into understanding the will of God, then you are to do those things that are pleasing unto him. And do what? And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You got to replace your thoughts with God's thoughts so that your ways will become like his ways. He said, you got to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that's what's going to give you life. That's what's going to bring you up out of that, out of that grave. But turn over to Hosea. This, I'm sorry, 24, thank you. 
And that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true hope. Again, he said you got to put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You have to create in you a godly mindset. And it has to be based on God's righteousness, not your righteousness. You have to be sanctified or set apart by the word of God. Turn over to Hosea, the sixth chapter. We're almost done. Hosea, the sixth chapter. Because I say the, the situation that we face as a people, if you sit down and think about it, it can be very discouraged. But then, if you look at the word of God, then you understand. You understand what the end is going to be. You know that this is not going to be forever. You're not going to always remain here. Individually, no one can say what's going to happen. But collectively, as a people, I know we are not going to remain in the condition that we are in forever. I know that God's ultimate plan for us is to take us back and put us back in the land that he had gave our forefathers, the land that he had promised unto Abraham as part of the covenant that he had made with him. That's why it's called the promised land. We are going to go back to the promised land. We're not going to be here forever. Hosea 6, and verse number 1. And he's telling us that here. Go ahead. But he's telling us what we need to do in order to bring that about. What does he say? Come and let us return unto the Lord. Go ahead. For he hath torn, and we, and he will heal us. He said, look, you got to repent. you got to turn unto God. He said, come and let us return unto the Lord. He's the one that's done this. He's torn us. He said, but he's also the one that will heal us. Go ahead. He has, he has smitten, he has, but he is also the one that will bind us up. He is the one that will bandage us. Go ahead. Verse number two, what's going to happen? After two days will he revive us. Uh -huh. The third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Again, the Lord is going to bring us up out of this grave that we find ourselves in. Turn over to Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. He's going to bring us up out of this valley. He's going to tell us what else he's going to do. Because remember the nation had been split, had it not? 37, pick it up at verse number 15. You go ahead when you get there. The word of the Lord came again unto me, son. Uh-huh. Moreover thou son of man. Do what? Take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Uh -huh. And take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. Because what the Lord is getting ready to do is getting ready to show that he's going to combine and nail, bring the nation back together. He's going to join it back. Go ahead. Into one. And, and join them one to another into one stick. Go ahead. They shall become one in thine hand. Go ahead. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Will thou not show us what thou meanest by these? And he's going to tell them what it means. Go ahead. Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. What? Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel and his fellows. That represents the lost tribes of Israel. Go ahead, the ten tribes. And do what? And what is he going to do with them? And will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick. Uh huh. They shall be one in mine hand. Go ahead. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes. And that lets you know the ones that's over there talking about they the Jim. When he said he was gonna bring them back, he didn't say he was gonna bring one back. Right. Because Jew is just short for Judah. He didn't say he was just gonna bring Judah back. All twelve. Are going to be brought back. But go ahead. Verse 21. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, uh -huh. Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heath. From the, amongst the nations. Go ahead. Whether they be gone. Uh -huh. And will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. Again, he's going to bring us up out of captivity, up out of slavery. 
the Lord said Jerusalem was going to be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. When that comes into being, God is going to return his people back to the promised land. Go ahead, verse number 22. I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. Go ahead. And one king shall be king to them all. Go ahead. They shall be no more two nations. Uh -huh. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Again, the Lord is going to join the nation back together. He said, I'm going to make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king is going to be king to them all. Because at that time, the true king is going to reign in Jerusalem. Because the Lord is going to be back. And that's none other than Jesus. He said, they're going to... There shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Go ahead. Neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols, uh -uh. nor with their detestable no. things. No, go ahead. Nor with any of their transgressions. As I said, when they go back to the land this time, the Lord ain't going to have no trouble with his people. No trouble with his people. Go ahead. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places, uh -huh. and they have sinned. Go ahead. And will cleanse them. With his word. Go ahead. So shall they be my people, and I will be their God. And what else is going to take place at this time that you'll know that Israel is back? Go ahead. David, my servant, shall be king over them. He's not David dead. So this is talking about after the first resurrection. He said, David, my servant, is going to be king over them. David ain't back, is he? Neither is Israel. But go ahead. And they all shall have one shepherd. And that one shepherd is the true shepherd, none other than Jesus. Go ahead. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. Uh-huh. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant. Go ahead. And Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Go ahead. Where your fathers have dwelt. Uh-huh. And they shall dwell therein. Even they and their children and their children's children forever. And he's going to reiterate something. What is that? And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Again, David ain't back and neither is Israel. At this time, but it's going to take place. Go ahead. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. And what kind? Of, and this is going to be what at this time? It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. He said, moreover, I'm going to make a covenant of peace with them. And it's going to be an everlasting covenant with them. Because Israel is not going to break God's covenant no more. No more trouble out of this people. Go ahead. And I will place them. Uh -huh. And multiply them. They're going to prosper. Go ahead. And will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. Because the Lord is going to be back and he's going to dwell in Zion. That's his place of habitation. He's desired it forever. He's going to dwell there forever. Go ahead in verse 27. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Uh-huh. Yea, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Go ahead.